My name is Alastair McKenzie. I'm the social worker at the renal unit at the Austrian Hospital. I'd like to introduce a short film that may help to explain to some dialysis patients the value of using art while on dialysis. It's a very difficult treatment and uh, occupies a lot of time in the patient's life. We'll be talking to two patients who've been through that journey before and have used art successfully and you'll hear in the interview how it worked for them. And also talking to one of the renal consultants who can explain how the evidence is there now to support the use of art. Hope you enjoy this. I'm Paul. Um, I came on to dialysis quite quickly. I'd had kidney failure, but then my kidneys stopped very quickly. And it was a, quite a shock for me, both mentally and physically, just what, what dialysis was like. Um, it did make a massive difference, but it was, it was very hard for me at the start. Um, pro and probably the mental bit was the hardest, and that I knew it was going to be um, attached to a dialysis machine. Four to, uh, three times a week for four, four hours each time. But again, that was what was um, saving my life at the, at the time and made, made a massive difference. But it is challenging in, in lots of different ways, mainly because you don't realize your kidney, kidneys do so many things within your body and all those things are affected um, once they stop working. I was taken into hospital in uh, 20, 2021 when I ended up in a &E with my lungs were at 93% capacity, full of blood, both my kidneys had died, my heart was damaged because I was actually started coughing up blood and then a friend who was just said to me you need to go to the hospital and I was like I'll go to bed, it'll be alright <laughs> but then uh, every time I was breathing it sounded like somebody rumping a packet of crisps so I knew as well myself things weren't too good and then uh, filled a pint glass full of blood by coughing it up so I decided to go in and and &E. and then uh, when I was in a &E, they basically told me to plan my own funeral so they did it was things were that bad so I actually ended up getting the minister up planning my own funeral and stuff like that and then it, I ended up being put into a coma and it just coma and when I come out of the coma I had these strange wires sticking out of my neck like Frankenstein's monster so uh, that was my introducing the kidney dialysis through my neck it was it started off taking the blood through the neck because at the time I didn't know what was wrong or what was going wrong but I ended up like a pretty special case because it ended up we were having uh, they were having the conferences in uh, Newcastle and all different like lung, lung specialists, kidney specialists, and all different specialists having all these meetings with me. <laughs> Why what was always going wrong? So it took me a while to find out. But then that's when I was introduced to, to, to I found out that it was uh, end stage kidney disease. Once I started dialysis, I found it very hard, especially around the first month or so. But after that, I began to realise that that you could live with it and it did make a massive difference. Um, I'd always been interested in art and drawing and activities like that and I began to realise that, that the way to look at dialysis for me which helped was to say well I've got four hours every day, three days a week that I can then try to use and what I started to do was do small watercolour sketches gradually progressing to um, larger or medium sized oil paintings which actually helped lift my mood and in a way helped me escape from the dialysis unit to the locations that I was trying to draw or paint. I took a part, uh, the first, when I first came across art was in, uh, I'd seen a prison cell <laughs> and 23 hour lockup in a prison cell. Uh, I went to jail in 2013, so it did, I, bit of a bad coloured past sort of thing like that. Growing up in Northern Ireland, I got caught up with the rubbish that came along with Northern Ireland at the time. So, and fortunately, I wasted most of my life being an agent running around for that rubbish and then got a prison sentence, done two prison sentences long term. So uh, the second time I really wanted to change my life and I said I had enough of it. So I went in with a mindset that I was going to get educated, but I took up art and <laughs> education went out the window. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I, I took up art, so I, I'd done a lot of art and actually worked as an artist in the, in the art department in prison. And uh, that's where I sort of relate to where dialysis, I didn't know until I started dialysis, but I, rely, I can uh, relate to being in prison in dialysis because you're both, you're both confined to a small space for a long period of time. So the likes of art therapy, where well, what you want, it can be like a therapy, but I don't really like to call it art therapy, but like the art in prison and then while I was on dialysis, it had a massive, massive impact. But I was a self-employed artist before I took ill, 
So it was, so I'd already been doing art, but if it wasn't for art, I don't know, I don't think I would have been able to cope going through the arts, to be honest. Starting um, craft or art activities while on dialysis did make a, a real difference to me quite quickly. Um, it used up at least two hours of the four hours quite quickly, and I began to look forward to coming into dialysis because I had that protected time um, away from your family and, and kids where you knew you could work on some drawings. Um, initially I would only do it for maybe half an hour um, but then progressing up to about two hours. I found any more than that um, would get too tiring uh, but another interesting part of it was the figuring out how you were actually going to be able to carry out paintings without inconveniencing the staff. Um, and also there was a lot of benefits in that other patients began to become a bit interested in what you were trying to do and it, it lightened their day and it gave you something to talk about um, throughout your dialysis uh, session. So it, so it was positive in a, in a number of different ways for me. I think when you start painting or drawing in front of other people that, that can be challenging. I had come from an art background and had always been really doing it so that part for me wasn't as much of a challenge, um, but it, it, it takes you a wee while to get used to it, and, but that's why I started off with small sketches and not really expecting anything too much, but gradually after a few weeks uh, the quality of my work working in here began to improve, and, and that's what I would say to people is that even if you're not sketching, there's a lot of free tutorials online, either using YouTube or whatever that through the hospital Wi-Fi system you can access while you're in your hospital bed. So even if you're not actually sketching at the time in the unit, you can follow a lot of different uh, artists or painters from around the world, which was what I started doing. Maybe when I wasn't painting, I could be watching um, a lesson given by somebody in, in England, somebody giving it in, in California, or a painter working in the outback in Australia was one of the favorite guys I like to watch each week. So it, it, it definitely has benefits and, and being able to use them in, while you're in your hospital bed, it gives you a, a, a kind of freedom from, from your dialysis and you can try to use the, the period on dialysis positively. Trying to adapt while you're on the dialysis machine can be hard, but I used to enjoy prepping my um, materials and equipment before I came to dialysis and trying to plan how I was going to carry out the sketches or paintings and if you do a wee bit of thought before it, it you can work it out and that becomes part of the challenge as well where you, you've won you, in my case I had a fistula in my left arm so I could all I could really use my left arm for was either for holding paint brushes or holding um, a, a tube of paint um, or, a, or a print stick of glue um, so even if you're doing quite restrictive things if you can uh, work around those it becomes actually in some respects more interesting because you're having to work with with limited with limited resources and sometimes you can you it makes your brain um, become a bit more creative and you, you can you can produce very good work if you just plan and take your time so it, so it, although it's a challenge it it, it, it brought some interest in um, outcomes sometimes because of the restrictions. When you talk to somebody about art, the first thing they say is, I can't draw a stick man. But art so, covers so many different ways. You have abstract art, which is more or less just, you don't, it's not like, it's just like expressing yourself on canvas. But everybody has their own unique, different way of expressing themselves. So art can be for everyone. You just have to find your different genre of art, or what you prefer, like, but creative writing, songwriting, music, poetry. Uh, creative ceramics, fizzle artist. <laughs> so there's so many different types of art that there, there always is some, but that's really, really good for the head. But what I find too as well, especially was, was a big impact for me was when I worked, was in prison. Like we used to have a, an afternoon class and, a, and we called it the headers class, but it was just people who had never done art before. And they come down and give art a go for their first time and see once they've done their first piece of art and that sense of achievement. You know, it made them, it kept them going and it gave them a hobby. Like I was lucky enough I got a career out of it. A lot of people got a hobby which was really good for their mental health and state of mind. So like for dialysis patients too, it could be really, really beneficial. We do know um, from evidence that diversionary activities 
especially during therapy like dialysis where you're in the one place for four, four and a half hours, three times a week, every week. Uh, for, for, for perhaps a very long period of time. These activities can actually help a uh, sense of well-being and you know that in turn I think is terribly important when we're looking at the patient's experience of, of, of attending our unit. It's been a real privilege and uh, it's been really exciting working with Alistair and with Stephen and Paul uh, on this venture. We're committed in the, in the dialysis unit here to both quality, uh, the experience of the patients and the safety of what we do, but um, I think what Stephen and uh, Paul have pointed towards is, is a different metric by which we can measure ourselves. Uh, we know that we provide quality dialysis and that's evidenced by uh, national registry data and it's also uh, evidenced by the patient reported outcome measures which is a national survey of patient experience. But I think what Stephen and Paul have shown here is that the impossible can be made possible and what they've shown I think is an inspiration both to not just to other patients but to the staff and maybe beyond that as to how you can overcome challenges so I'm really looking forward to uh, how we're going to develop this and scale it up across the unit.